And now, an Envision Financial podcast with Luke Smith on Canberra's 2 C. Luke Smith, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thanks very much for popping by our newly refurbished studio. It looks the same, but the air conditioning works. I am <laughs> so excited, honestly. <laughs> this may be the best show of the week. It will definitely be the coolest show of the week. And anybody that's been a guest during the year will know you been can't be able to lose a little bit of weight. Well, uh, you know, we, we, we think we've got it sorted. Now, fingers crossed it doesn't go haywire again. No, but exactly. you know how these things are. You know, you think you got it fixed and then not, something it's, else. I think it's one of those professions, and no respect to, no, no disrespect to any air conditioning people out there, but it's, it's one of those sciences that nobody's ever truly mastered, no matter what the layout of the building. Yes, and everybody's got a story about their particular office. And Correct. The, the Spot on. Exactly. And the other thing is, because you can't please everybody, just when you think it's just right, somebody else is almost too cool. Well, it's... And, and <laughs> the, the ladies that work for me will attest to that because at one end of my office, it can be the Sahara Desert, and then people will walk out of a meeting and you could be in the Antarctic. Yes. And we even had someone working with a blanket wrapped around them this week oh, because goodness. it was such an extreme from one end to the other. So like you fun. need to get the technicians in to have a look at that. It's, this is this has been underway for, mm. yeah. All right, it's time to talk about uh, finance matters. And this week we're asking uh, a rather impudent question. How can you be a great client next year? All clients are great, aren't they, Luke? Um, yeah, look, for sure. <laughs> uh, I thought we'd have a bit of fun with this because I know my girls, you know, after 12 months of, of, of chasing and chasing and, and providing, you know, the best service that they can, I just want to touch on the fact that it's not a one-way road. You know, you can go to anybody, be it accountant, lawyer, anything you want, and I want people to understand that they have a role to play. And you go to any service provider, and again, this is all a bit tongue-in-cheek, but you, you go to any service provider and say, can you provide this for me? You're part of that process because there are legalities that need to be adhered to in any profession, and there is really, really stupid paperwork issued by really, really stupid institutions. And, and anybody that's involved in any industry will understand that. And everybody knows that the admin world that we all work in has got worse and worse and worse. So I think if you want to be a good client next year, regardless of the industry or business that you're dealing with, listen to what people are saying to you and act on their instructions. Now that doesn't sound like much, but when people go to huge lengths to explain things to you and you don't do it, or your part of the process was to go and do A, B and C and you don't, you cause everybody a lot of angst, pain, suffering and frustration. Um, the next thing people can do is return paperwork quickly. The faster you can get something done, the faster something can be facilitated for you. And you've got to remember, it's for you. It's not for anybody else. Mm -hmm. So if you get given some paperwork, take the time to read it. And, and off the back of that, follow the instructions you've been given. I don't know how many times this year we've sent paperwork out with just some sign here tabs on and everything else has been completed for somebody. And they feel the need to fill out the wrong section, fill out another section, cross something out sign it somewhere else. If all you need to do is sign the, sign the box that has the arrow next to it, just do that. Because what you don't realise is that if you send something back and you've missed a signature, or you send something back and you've filled out another whole section of a document, yeah. you've probably void the document. And I guess if somebody's crossed something out, it's because they, they think it's wrong or disagree with it. But if you have a, a, an issue like that, the thing is the financial advisor or other advisors, whether it's a tax accountant mm -hmm. or a lawyer or whatever, they're actually working for you. So the thing to do would be to ask them, say, hey, listen, I don't understand this. I don't think it's right. Can you explain what's going on? Spot on. And, and I guess that's why we're having a tongue in cheek discussion about this, because I know my girls go to huge lengths to get things done and be as timely as possible. And they do a fantastic job of, you know, going above and beyond because that's, you know, one of our sort of core philosophies. But I, I see the, the, the look in their eyes when something comes back and it's been massacred with signatures, scribble, cross outs, and, and whatever else has gone on. And as you just said, one quick phone call, why do you put that in there? Oh, because that's part of that. Oh, okay, that makes sense, no dramas. That's a lot easier to do than then 
reprint, recomplete, resend, recollect, resubmit, and there goes another week or two. So if you get some instructions and you're not sure, call and ask. Have a quick chat, a five second phone call, or a quick text message can save you, you know, potentially two weeks. Because some documents, like for example, um, uh, a binding nomination for a super fund, like if you amend that in any way, shape or form, cross out a date, initial something, change the spelling of something, any amendment in that, 99% of the time that form's gonna get sent back and the super fund will reject it. So if you're not sure, leave it alone. Give us a call, come in, fill it out in the office, get some help, but just follow the instructions that you've been given. Um, and the other, the, the other one that I think people need to work with third parties, be it an accountant, be it a lawyer, be it any third party provider, not everything is the click of a button. I find a lot of people, and this is, this is probably the, 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 the service provider's issue as well, by not explaining what's involved. Um, but I think if people understand what's involved in getting something for you, and they call up 15 minutes after they send an email and said, where is it? And don't realize that it's a two hour process to pull that together. Now, I think there's, there's some blame to be shared there because you haven't explained the, 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 the steps that need to be undertaken, but be realistic. You know, calling up today and saying, oh, by the way, can I buy, settle and do the conveyancing of a house before Christmas? There's a very good chance the answer is gonna be no. If you've been meaning to get that bank loan sorted and you want it all done and wrapped up before Christmas, and you're just filling out your personal details in an application today, there's a very good chance you're not gonna get a home loan by Christmas. So be realistic in your expectations. Again, people are in there doing stuff for you in, in any in the industry that you're dealing with, but you need to be realistic in relation to people's capacity to provide what you're after. And I think that, that also removes a lot of unnecessary pressure on both sides confusion, frustration, and misunderstanding. Um, because everybody's trying to do the best they can all the time. A number of times throughout the year, you've brought in special guests, and mm -hmm. these have been specialists in various things like tax accounting or mm -hmm. uh, legal advice for estate planning, yep. various different expert specialists that you've brought in, yep. and these are people that you would recommend to your clients for those services. Mm -hmm. But what if you tell me, oh, Leon, I think you should go and see so-and-so, the accountant, to sort out that tax problem. And I say, no, 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 I don't, I don't want to go to your guy. I know a guy. I like my guy. Does that annoy you if I do that? Um, no, I don't. As long, as long as you get an outcome, I don't care who you use. And, and you know, as, as somebody that has a network of people that you're dealing with regularly, part of my responsibility in my eyes is to put people with the right people. You know, you deal with different walks of life, different occupations, different belief systems that people have. And I think knowing where you can get somebody's work done and know that that person will get along well with the person you've referred them to, a lot of the time the relationship is the most important part of that because going to a family lawyer to get a will is going to a family lawyer to get a will. Like, they're gonna make you a will. It's like going to a restaurant saying, I'd like a medium rare steak. You don't go, oh, wow. Yeah, well, but some restaurants are better than other restaurants. This is true. <laughs> this is very true. Um, so for me, that, that personality side of things is vital because you want to have an engaged relationship with a third party. And I want people to come away from that and go, oh, he or she was lovely. I spoke to her. She did a great job. Thanks very much for that. Because you're also trying to avoid a breakdown in understanding or communication. And I find certain industries are better at at it than others, but people go in and ask for things and they may not have all of the context at hand, or they may not know really what they're asking for. So for me to send you somewhere and I know that that person will do a good job, I also then have a, the ability to let them know what's going on, bring them up to speed, give them the history, give them the background. That then not only saves you half an hour of time if they're billing by the hour, but you can then get what you need, even if you can't articulate it in a way that gets us the outcome that you're after. You can go it on your own, that's fine, but more often than not, I'll have something come back in that isn't actually what we were after, or it's missing bits, because you didn't have all of that information to relay to that individual. So, you know, I don't mind what people do or who they use, I, I have no 
preference or, or affiliation. There's, there's never anything in it for me. I'm just always concerned that we can get the best outcome at the greatest level of efficiency. And a lot of the time at a very competitive price because something that might cost me a thousand bucks could be two or three thousand dollars elsewhere because there isn't a relationship. So leverage the people that we know as service providers, and that could be your lawyer, your accountant, because they're dealing with similar problems and plugging similar holes for the vast majority of their working week. This is a bit of a touchy subject, but do people ever come in and get so upset that they're angry at you? Um, I Look, I had a lady come in this week and burst into tears because she, she openly admitted that she was absolutely petrified about having the meeting, which, you know, anybody that knows me, I'm as, <laughs> if I was any more laid back, I'd be horizontal. Um, and, and, you know, at the end of it, she said, oh, well, you know, this was great because I didn't, I didn't, it wasn't what I expected because she had this preconceived idea of how it would go and it, it went another way. Um, and it actually wasn't that frightening. I also think if you're gonna come in and get advice, just listen. Because if you're going to see a plumber about plumbing or an electrician about ele electrical cabling, don't then argue that Billy the plumber knows how to do the wiring. You can have a view on something, that's wonderful, and I'm happy to you know, debate your point, but don't come in and pick a fight. Don't come in and go, well, you said this or he said that. Or if somebody's trying to explain a broader concept to you, this is something you could do. Don't leave with things like, so you're saying do this. No, not at all. I'm just making you aware of A, B, C, and D. What you choose to do is outside of the scope of today, but I want you to be aware of it. So don't, don't come in with a narrow-minded view of what could happen. Come in with an open mind um, and, and the willingness to listen and learn because you might actually get something that's better than expected and you may not even know it existed. I'm with Luke Smith from Envision Financial today. We're asking the rather pointed question, how can you be a great client next year? Well, you can start this year for one thing. It's 11 to five, we'll be back with more in just a moment. Seven to five, it's a Friday afternoon, which means we're talking finance with Luke Smith from Envision Financial. Today's question, and it's a beauty, how can you be a great client next year? Luke, I take it you've had some difficult experiences this year. <laughs> no, well, do you know what? I, I, I keep things, you know, very jovial. You know, most people come in my office and expect this formal three-piece suit, and, and it's not like that anymore. You know, I, I came off my bike in 2021, plates in the shoulder, six months in a sling, and asked everybody that came in my office for six months, do you want me to put a suit back on? Because in my industry, the perception is that, or the, the, the preconceived notion is that it has to be formal and it has to be strict and it has to be very serious. This is a difficult thing for people to come and talk about, right? So I'm super aware of that. And anybody that's been in my office the year knows there's a very good chance that I'm gonna walk out and say hello in the foyer in a pair of Jordans because that's just how we roll in my office. And if I could make it uniform and get a pair for all the girls in my office, mm -hmm. I would. Because I want people to be able to come and have a chat and have a relationship in a relaxed environment where you can have a laugh and a giggle. Yes, it's very serious. Yes, it's very important. But I think, you know, I've got an obligation to provide great service and try it. And you've got an obligation to be a great client and assist us in that role. On the other hand, while you're in a pair of jeans and a t-shirt, you do expect your clients to turn up fully dressed, don't you? <laughs> yeah, dressed is good. Yeah. <laughs> dressed helps. Yeah. When they're not, those conversations get a little bit awkward. But you know, I'm, I don't mind if it's a pair of suit shoes or a pair of thongs. As long as you come and listen, that's that's you know that's all I can do as a service provider. But I just think people should remember that this doesn't have to be a wonderfully formal thing. Just because you've got a suit on doesn't mean you have to pay more. Mm -hmm. um, and I want people to be able to come and listen and consume information in the way that works best for them. If that means you watch a video, draw a picture, or just read something, you know, I've got an obligation and I think people have an obligation to work with each other. And if you both do your bit, it can make the relationship flow 
that much smoother. All right, we're rapidly running out of time, but just quickly recapping the main points. Follow instructions. Yes. Uh, don't sign where it's not indicated. Sign where it is indicated. Makes things and easier. And stop crossing things out and scribbling on things. If you have yes. a question, ask. Correct. Uh, if you have a text message, follow it up and reply. Yeah. You know, do, do and, and the other big one there, very quickly, is don't assume that everything's spam. If you're not sure, call. Mm -hmm. Because text now is a very valid way of sort of communicating and yep. getting to people. Um, which can be easier than emails and phone calls. So if you're not sure, just call. Hey, did you send me that? Yes, I did. And then you can go forth and action. Okay. Be realistic and yep. uh, make sure you remember that everybody's doing the best they can. And yep. uh, at the same time, we're not magicians. Um, yes. And uh, the more yep. you listen, the more you learn, and the less need you might have to ask further questions. Yeah, and I think if you, if you come in and, and let something be explained, there's a very good chance that someone's asked it in the past. So if we can get the explanation out, it'll probably answer your next five questions. Fantastic. So where do we get more information? Yeah, 6260-4749, envisionfinancial.com.au on the internet. We've got the podcast, The Strategy Stacker, Luke Talks Money on iTunes and Spotify. We've got YouTube, Envision Financial Canberra. We've got YouTube Shorts. We've got The Strategy Stacker on the Tiki Toka. And this isn't a chapter in Smart Money Strategy, your ultimate guide to finding <laughs> No. <laughs> but everything else is. So there's a couple of uh, well, chapters in there. Well, you know, we'll have to save this for the sequel. Well, that's it. I might bring it out on DVD or an audio book <laughs> and we can add a chapter in there. Add a chapter about how to behave as a client. <laughs> All right. Well, there we go. Almost, man, how we? All we right. Um, I think we've only got one more show in the year. Do we? Okay. Next Friday. All right. We'll see you then. See you next week. Luke Smith from Envision Financial on 2 double 6, 3 minutes to 5. All the latest news is coming up next.